Now we are going to see why the BDS is equal to negative tau times n. Notice this is just a factor being a constant multiple of the other factor. And this implies that this factor and this factor are parallel. And that's what we are trying to show. We are going to first start with the definition of B, the unit binomial factor. And that's equal to the cross product of T, the unit tangent factor, and the unit normal factor n. And right here we have the BDS, so we'll just look at this equation and take the derivative with respect to S. So on the left hand side, we get our DBDS. And then for the right hand side, make sure we use the product rule for taking the derivative of this cross product. And keep in mind, the order of the cross product matters. So when we write it down, we also have to keep the same order. I'm going to keep the first function, which is t, and then we do the cross product of the derivative of the second. So that's dn ds, and then we add the derivative of the first. And we have to write that down first. And then do the cross product of the second one, which is n, in this order. Of course, the order of the addition doesn't matter, but the order of the cross product right here and right here, they matter. And in fact, I'd make a mistake in a previous video. So thanks to my viewer who pointed this out to me. The second one, do the cross product with the derivative of the first. Also with respect to S. And that's why I'm remaking this part because I want to make sure I get this right for you guys. Now the question is, how can we simplify this expression? Well, the truth is this part is really just equal to the zeros factor. Why? Because n, which is equal to 1 over the curvature kappa times dt ds. So as you can see, n is just a constant multiple of dt ds, which is this factor right here. So in another word, n and dt ds are parallel. And when we have two parallel factors, once we do the cross product, we will get the zeros factor. So in fact, we just have this being equal to that. Okay, now what can we say about this though? Notice the BDS is equal to the cross product of this and that. And one of the properties of being a cross product is that this is normal to both this and that. So let's just focus on this right here. From this equation, we can say that's the first condition that we need. We can say that the BDS is normal to the factor t. Okay, so that's good. Now, what else can we say about dBDS? Well, this right here is the derivative of b. And b is what? The unit binomial factor. And because it's a unit factor, so it has constant lengths. Therefore, we can say dBDS is also normal to b. And that's the second thing that we need. db ds is also normal to b because b has constant lengths and of course i can indicate that the length of b is always equal to one because it's a unit factor so that means the BDS is normal to both T and B. And what's the connection between T and B? Well, remember we have the T and B, right? So let me just take a look right here. So here let's say this is where T is pointing, and let's say here is where N is pointing, and let's say here is B. How can we have a factor that's normal to both this and that? Well, it must be normal to the plane formed by T and B, right? So imagine we have a wall and then the factor must be like this or maybe like that. So 
I will write this down right here. So, because we have one and two, I will just say from one and two. We know that the BDS must be normal to the plane formed by factor T and B. All right, so something like this. What does that mean? That means this must be parallel to N. Thus, we can say that the B DS must be parallel to N. And now, when we have two factors that are parallel, what does that mean? That means Our first factor, db ds, is equal to a constant multiple because I run out of uh, letters. I'm just going to use a hashtag. Well, this means a number, okay? It's just going to be a constant multiple of the second factor, which is n. And how are we going to write this constant? Well, you guessed it. We are going to write it as negative tau. This right here is precisely our negative tau. And you might be wondering why we need a negative. Well, I will tell you this right here is just because of the tradition. That's why they use a negative tau, but imagine that this right here just being a constant. That's all it matters. So that is exactly why. And now from here, how can we get the definition of tau? So now all we have to do is to isolate tau. But here we have negative tau times n. Do not divide n on both sides though, because n is a vector, and we do not have vector division. So what can we do? Well, n is a unit vector. So if we do the dot product of n by n, then we'll just get the magnitude of n squared, and the magnitude of n is just 1. 1 squared is just 1. So we are going to look at this equation, and then we'll do the dot product with n, on both sides. And this right here is just a scalar multiplication, but here is the dot product. This right here, we will get the magnitude of the factor squared, and that's just equal to 1. Square that, it's just 1. So in another word, we see db ds dot n is equal to negative tau. Finally, we can just divide negative 1 both sides. This is just a constant, right? Negative 1. So tau is equal to negative db ds dot n. Whew. Yeah, so that's it. This is the definition of tau. Unfortunately, here, whenever we have differentiation with respect to s, it's not so easy to do, right? So we also have different formulas to compute tau, just like we have different formulas to compute the curvature, but I'm going to work that out for you guys in another video.